Mitch Ortiz Mitch Ortiz here with the fighter's voice, the only voice that matters. You, you, you have that fighter on you right now. You have that. Talk about Mets getting Independence Day. We can call this Teddy Atlas here in Las Vegas, Hi, Nevada. I'm Rich Ortiz with the Fighter's Voice, the only voice that matters, and we're like the WBC. We're simply knocking out the competition. This man that we have with us today, the man, the myth, the legend, comes from a legendary background. His father, Jose Suleiman, the founder, the one, the only of the WBC, now Mauricio Suleiman is carrying on that legacy and is going to fulfill everybody's dream that enters inside the ring. How are we doing, Mauricio? Very, very well. Thank you so much for your very kind words. It's easy words. I mean, the, your legacy. I mean, your, every step that you take forward, you continue to touch lives. And you're every fighter's dream once they see you inside the middle of the ring. Well, uh, that's a blessing to see fighters from all over the world that uh, when they start, all they want is either becoming a, a star uh, for their country and win a medal or become a WC world champion with a green belt. Exactly, and, and you mentioned that reference, the green belt. A lot of fighters, though, they appreciate the other governing bodies as we all do, but yet there's nothing like putting on that green belt. You could ask Tyson Fury, Canelo, the list goes on, Tommy the Hitman Hearns. Legacy has always been the green belt. When you hear that, how does that make you feel? Very proud and uh, makes me much more uh, committed to continue always trying to do the best for the sport. Uh, it's a big responsibility because these are the lives of so many. Boxing is a great sport. Uh, it's the opportunity for kids who have no other option, who have been rejected by society, by school, by work, to go into the gym, change their life, change their family and change the future. So. It's a great, great responsibility and I'm so proud. We're always very close to the fighters before, during and after their years in the ring. So it's a great family. You know, when you mentioned family, um, you answered a question I was about to ask. I, I was going to ask, you're not just a governing body. I mean, you guys go and help out. You, you have the WBC Cares. The, the list goes on. I mean, you guys help kids. You help adults, foundations. Is this something you want to continue to do, or is this just the tip of the iceberg on, on the masses of lives that you'll be touching in the future? We continue. It's, uh, it's our commitment. We have uh, the WBC Cares, for example. We have 26 chapters, meaning each one is each one country, and they go out every single day and they do their own. Uh, visiting gyms, children's hospitals, orphanages, jails, uh, with the champions, with the members of the WBC, and they just go out and, and touch lives and make a difference. And it's a great, great uh, feeling and a great commitment that we share all over the world. The WBC family is huge, and I'm very proud to be uh, always uh, seeing great friends uh, being together and sharing those uh, same vi values and principles. You know, I'm going to ask you a real deep question. Growing up with your father, who's been an ambassador, who's touched many lives, continues to touch many lives, and his legacy is still alive today. Every time a champion puts that belt on, your father's in heaven smiling, saying, I'm right there with you, tightening that belt and putting it around that champion as well. Did you ever think, growing up in your wildest dreams, that the WBC would be where it's at today, growing up as a child, watching your father conduct and orchestrate the WBC? Yes, um, I mean, I, I always saw my father as my hero. I saw how hard he worked, how much sacrifice it is behind the, the things that happen. Uh, he grew up in a world without facts, without email, without cell phone, without social media, without so many things that make everybody's life easier today. So he had to travel the world, he had to uh, work from sun to sun and uh, it was just something very special you know we would go home and there would be Sugar Ray Leonard having lunch at our house Roberto Duran of course Muhammad Ali several times Tyson De La Hoya uh, my father always opened up his his house our house our home to anyone in boxing it could be Ali or it could be a four-rounder or an amateur fighter and um I never felt any difference. I always saw how hard he worked to make sure that WEC was always uh, doing something for the fighters and always doing it with excellency. Well, you know what? The, the legacy continues as we talked about. And um, 
you know, you yourself sometimes need a breath of fresh air. I mean, because you're exhausted. You, you never seem to take a break. But uh, a friend of mine, Ali Setback, said it best. He said, you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. That's exactly it. Uh, boxing is very different from any other activity. It always takes place on Saturday. And it could be in Japan, it could be in Europe, it could be anywhere. So we have to be there, alert, 24-7. 365 uh, year, days a year, but it's very gratifying. Like here I have Chuck Williams from Hawaii, a dear friend for so many years. Then you go out uh, and you will meet so many other friends that uh, you have shared the table, that you have shared uh, just moments in, in any fi aspect of life. And it is a, as I say, it's a big family. It's, a, it's not work. It's a great honor and satisfaction to be able to be here. Yes, indeed it is. You mentioned earlier, you mentioned uh, Mike Tyson. That was going to be one of the questions I had. What was it like? I watched that sit down you had with him. What was it like sitting down with, with Iron Mike and just letting them questions fly? It was very special. Uh, Mike, I knew since I was uh, 15 years old, when he won the championship, uh, that was my first fight ever in Las Vegas. And and we became friends since since he began as a WBC champion, we have shared many good moments, and so there's a lot of uh, empathy that we share. He loved my father. My father visited him uh, when he was in jail, yeah. and uh, we, we have been always there for each other. And just to be talk, talking during the difficult times of the pandemic and uh, sharing what we were doing, uh, how was life, I was showing him pictures from his visits to Mexico and he was very, very happy and uh, he's a tremendous uh, icon, uh, but he's a beautiful person inside. You know, it, it's amazing how society um, gives us an, an opportunity um, to refresh ourselves, a, a, another coming of life, so to speak. And Mike Tyson, it's safe to say that he reinvented himself being true to himself and actually boxing needs Mike Tyson. Society needs Mike Tyson because of what he was able to overcome and where he's out today. When you hear me say that, how does that make you feel knowing that you too also grant that opportunity that Mike Tyson has with society today? Well, uh, he has a difficult uh, history. The life that he went through when he was a kid in the streets, when he started boxing, when he lost, uh, caused a mad on other people that he loved. Uh, just a unique history, unique story. And uh, he reinvented himself, as you say, from being the baddest man on, on, on earth, then became a, a true inspiration to others. You can overcome life. You can live happily, even if there's no fame and fortune. He's so happy having a, a nice uh, private meal rather than being in the spotlight. So uh, his wife, Kiki, is a tremendous influence. She came in as a blessing and saved Mike Tyson from himself, from society, and from all the dangers that uh, there's out there when, when you're famous. Very well said. Uh, as they say, you know, a good, strong man always needs a good, strong, supportive woman in his life. You mentioned losses. Um, you know, Mike Tyson has lost those close to him, and, and you, uh, you, you lost your father, and I can identify with that, losing personally my, my son. How much gratitude does it give you in fulfillment, knowing that every time there, there's a champion being crowned, you're there to put the belt around that champion and to keep your, your father's legacy and his name alive? How does that make you feel? Because you don't just put the belt around that champion. I know you're doing it with your father. That's, that's my inspiration. My goal in life since I can remember has been uh, I want to be like my father I wanna uh, be like him I went to school uh, business management because that's what he started and I was very close to him all all along so when he passed away uh, the only thing that has kept me in in a in a line has been boxing so when I am in boxing, I represent him. I have him inside of me. I have him right next to me. He talks to me. I have dreams and he gives me some advice. It's incredible. And uh, that's my, you know, I wake up and I, I, I pray to God that I will do him proud. When I go to bed, 
I pray to God that I did him proud. So it's my motivation. Year, I mean, day after day after day. Well, I'm glad you found your, your serenity because um, after a loss, you, you have to find some something. It's not quite fulfillment. It, it, it's something that will motivate us to continue to go forward and continue to breathe. And not only that, but continue to touch lives as you have. Being that said, your family uh, around, and when your time comes, who's going to run the WBC? I mean, it's, it's not just somebody that you just say, okay, I'd like you to run this. I mean, it's a responsibility. It's an honor. It's a privilege. We're not saying you're going anywhere, so don't, don't get that wrong, but we always got to think ahead of time. Yes, you know, the WBC is a worldwide organization. It is not a family affair. It is not a one person. Uh, so there's a board of governors, and uh, there's elections for each post. So every four years, there are elections for president, the vice presidents, and all the board of governors. Uh, so b being said that, it is up to the WBC to see who will be the president once I no, I no longer are in the, in the, in the post of, as president. But it could be anyone. There's so many great persons in the WBC. Uh, they share the same values, the same principles that the WBC family has. Uh, we care about the fighters and that's the only thing. Their safety, their future, the growth of the sport in, in any way possible. So the WBC will carry on and will be bigger and bigger every year, regardless who is running it. Well, I tell you, somebody, I don't want to change who's running this thing, but we need some help. I'm a Cowboy fan just like you, and I keep getting my heart broken, man. What do you think we're going to do next? I mean, our quarterback looks like he's going to be out a couple of weeks. If you were running the Dallas Cowboys, what would be the next move for us? Well, it was a very disheartening opening week. No receptors. Then the quarterback uh, gets injured, who, who is the key of the, of the football team, and no plan B. I was, I was surprised, and uh, I don't know. What I would do is... Uh, having a team is a big responsibility. Having the greatest uh, team and the greatest uh, in, worldwide. The Cowboys are the number one franchise. Uh, I would go all out and do whatever it needs to take, regardless of whatever, and save the season. If we don't do anything dramatic at this moment, we're simply going to uh, lose a season in, even in week one. I agree with you. It's it's very tough, very very disappointing too as being a fan. And I know you got to go because people are looking at you, and I see that eye. So I do got to slip in a couple of questions. When you're at home and you're getting ready to go to sleep and you're trying to have peace, what keeps you up at night? What, what is your strongest thought that keeps you up at night? My kids, my family, and my kids. I I feel uh, sometimes very sad because I, I take so much time away from them, uh, building memories, uh, being there for the good and the bad, uh, happy when they succeed or, or with them when there's an issue. That, that's my main concern, my, my wife and my kids. As well they, sh they should be. You're a family man and you've been through tradition taught that way. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on you Say you were in just tremendous, tip-top shape, and you're getting ready to have a fight. Who would be in your corner? What trainers, what two trainers would you have in your corner to train Mauricio Suleiman? Angelo Dondi and um, Eddie Reynoso. There you go. That's, hey, that's of, of the past and, and the present. Now, what would be your walkout song inside the ring? Back in Black. ACDC? ACDC back in black. <laughs> I like that. That's not what I would, would thought, I think, but yeah, that would motivate you. Um, what color trunks would you come in? Green and gold. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we we'll rock in the WBC colors. Now, what do you got to say to all the friends, followers, and supporters that watch and not only support the WBC, the World Boxing Council, but Mauricio Suleiman, the legacy, and all that the WBC stands for? I would say um, thank you for following the sport. Uh, I would uh, recommend that uh, we take our moments away from the telephone and enjoy what we have around. 
I would recommend that uh, we start talking positive about boxing, about life, about everything. There's so much negativity. And when you are in the media, social media world, everything seems to carry towards the negative, to the scandal, to the aggression, to the, to the things that happen that hurt people. Instead of focusing on the positive and the good, there's so much beauty. When you have a life-changing uh, moment and you wake up and you see the beauty of listening to the birds and listening and watching the sky, when you go to bed and you see the sun uh, coming down, I mean, those things are priceless. They don't cost you anything. And we have them right there and we don't appreciate them at all. So I would say people, uh, try to put a chip on your mind to change it for the positive always. Hey, you heard it from the man himself. I want to take this time and thank everybody, all the supporters. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please subscribe www.youtube.com slash the fighter's voice. Remember, every fighter has a voice and so does the man, the myth, and the continued legacy of Marie Suleiman. It's a wrap. And as always, my favorite part of the show, thumbs up for Richie. Goodbye, but until next week, remember, remember, remember. It's always voiceography at its finest. So on behalf of Richard Ortiz, the special guests, Say hasta luego, babies. And always, thanks for listening.